Um, Andrew J. Rodden is the Director of Recycling and Waste Reduction for the Onondaga County Resource Recovery Agency. Uh, he administers the community's award-winning recycling program and coordinates a team of recycling professionals who manage a wide variety of environmental programs, including compost site operations and household hazardous waste collections. Rodden has over 25 years of professional solid waste experience and has served on the board of a number of professional environmental organizations, including the New York Product Stewardship Council, who's the current chair, and the New York State Association of Reduction, Reuse, and Recycling, which is NYSAR 3 He received a Master's of Public Administration degree from SU's Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs, and a Master's of Environmental Science from the State University of New York's College of Environmental Science and Forestry. He is a local boy, if you have not noticed. He received an undergraduate degree in public communication from Boston University. Um, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Andrew. Thanks so much for joining us. Andrew, you're muted. Maggie and Manu, if I spotlight Andrew for everyone, will you lose one another? Can you, can you guys hear me now? Yeah, see Jesse nodding. I, I, I think I can still see Maggie, give it a go. Um, let's see. So I've got a, a short presentation for you folks. If I can s share my screen. Come on. Okay. One more time. Everybody can hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. You know, I'm a local boy. Thanks for inviting me today. And, and whenever I speak to a Syracuse group like this, I'm, I just want to emphasize how local I am. I am a proud Nottingham Bulldog. So uh, my brother and my sister and I, we all, we all graduated from Nottingham once upon a time. So um, thanks for, for inviting me today and to, to share some, some information about the New York State Food Donation and Food Scraps uh, recycling law uh, that was uh, passed not too long ago and is really going to go into effect uh, in the beginning of next year. Sorry, Andrew, if you could restart your screen share in just a second. Manu and Maggie need to reconnect. So you want me to restart that? Are you pinned to one another, Maggie and Manu? Okay, now you can restart. Apologies. Thank you. Is that working? Uh, yeah. Okay, hold on. Great, I see a thumbs up from Maggie. Thank you. Ooh, okay, here we go. Um, so the law is going to go into effect uh, January of next year. Uh, there's also, uh, as part of that, there's a, a, a food scrap disposal prohibition uh, in connection with the law. Uh, who is it going to impact? Uh, it's going to impact basically very large generators of food waste. Folks who are generating, gener uh, that are generating more than two tons of food, uh, food waste per week, which is obviously on average is about 100 tons of food scraps per year. So those uh, who likely are going to be a subject to this um, are restaurants, really large restaurants. You're going to see in a second how large. Uh, grocery stores, uh, hotels, colleges, universities, uh, malls, and event centers. Uh, but I'd, like I said, in just a slide or two, I'm going to give you a sense of the, the size of those entities uh, uh, in order for them to be subject to this law. Uh, there's certain exemptions uh, uh, under the law, and those include farms, uh, K through 12 schools, nursing homes, and adult care facilities, uh, and hospitals. Uh, and basic, the basic requirements of the law that if, if you are a large generator generating about 100 tons per, per year of food scraps, you're going to have to separate and donate edible food. Uh, and um, you're going to have to separate and recycle all remaining food scraps uh, if uh, the generator is located within about 25 miles of an organics recycler. So really in a nutshell, this is the whole picture of how the law uh, is gonna work, who'd be subject to it and uh, what they'd be required to do. Um, but like I said, it's really just about really large generators. 
Um, for example, uh, da, 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 let's see. What is if you go down to the bottom and look at restaurants, the restaurant's going to have 69 employees before they would typically generate uh, this quantity of material. I mean, how many restaurants are there in, this, in the Syracuse area that have 69, almost 70 employees? I mean, I really can't think of many or any uh, offhand. Uh, there might be some colleges and uh, some, uh, some large grocery stores, et cetera, uh, or correctional facilities. So we're going to have some folks who are going to be subject to this law right off the bat. Uh, and here's the DEC's estimate um, of how many of these types of large quantity generators across the state, this is not local, this is across the state, they're going to be subject to this, um, approximately 1,245. Uh, I keep on going back to the restaurants, only 230 restaurants across the state. I mean, there's thousands, right? There's thousands of restaurants across the state, but only 230, according to the DEC, are large enough, uh, generate enough uh, food scraps uh, to be subject to this. Uh, at about 400 grocery stores. Uh, so just wanted to give you a sense that it's not everybody, folks. It, they really have to be generated quite a large quantity of material. I'm not going to go through all of this information, but I just uh, th 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 wanted to highlight a couple of things uh, that are included in the legislative objectives. Let's look at those green bullets first. Uh, what's, what's, their, what's the priority uh, from a policy standpoint uh, for the material that's going to be collected uh, through the program? Uh, so primarily, it's all it, you know. They, they want to first emphasize source reduction, uh, that reduce the amount of, of, of food scraps that are being generated uh, in the first place. Secondly, uh, uh, they want to emphasize recovery uh, and feeding uh, edible food, wholesome food to to hungry folks, people in need. Um, and thirdly, it would be repurposing to feeding animals. And fourth is recycling, uh, which would include a, a composting or going to an anaerobic uh, di digestion uh, type of facility. Uh, and then just one more point to emphasize in this slide, uh, the DEC has supported the recovery of wholesome food by, uh, they've been uh, over the course of uh, the past couple of years uh, in particular, providing grants from the, the State Environmental Protection Fund to increase the capacity of food banks and other emergency food providers. So those are the legislative objectives, but I just kind of wanted to really highlight here uh, that uh, they, there is a special focus on recovering uh, food um, uh, for folks in need. Um, uh, the DEC uh, is, is uh, working I, uh, with uh, 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 folks that um, uh, have an expertise and, and experience and knowledge of, of, uh, of, of uh, food uh, uh, recovery uh, and, and food donation programs. Uh, so uh, they're not setting up the regulations in the program in a vacuum. They're reaching out to the experts and folks kind of like you uh, to uh, to help them develop uh, the regulations and the policy uh, to make sure that the program is on target and meets the legislative uh, vision. So again, just kind of wanted to highlight that, that, that they are uh, calling upon stakeholders uh, uh, throughout the state to be part of their, uh, their policy making process uh, now that the law has passed. Um, just wanted to again highlight about the food recovery here uh, that designated, according to the law, designated food scrap generators uh, those large quantity generators must work with local food relief organizations to comply with the donation criteria required by those organizations and to minimize the amount of food that will lead to waste uh, at the relief organizations. So that, that's language directly from uh, the food donation and recycling law. Uh, supermarkets obviously are, are going to uh, be a major generator uh, of this uh, uh, material. Uh, and so the law sets forth that they're going to have to make excess edible food available uh, to food relief organizations. They're not required, however, to make available a particular quantity uh, or level of excess edible food or to transport that food or to distribute it. Uh, but but the, And they will be deemed in compliance if, if they're making good faith efforts to arrange uh, with a food relief organization that is re requested in writing to collect excess edible food from the supermarket. Um, I think there's probably uh, folks on the call or on your board who are much more familiar with this next bullet, uh, but in terms of liabilities uh, to those generators, uh, it's, it, uh, they'd be governed pursuant to the Bill Emerson Good Samaritan or Food Donation Act, uh, which I admit I'm really not uh, very, very familiar with, but I think they're trying to, 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 to uh, facilitate uh, the, the recovery of the edible food by um, uh, minimizing the liability of the donation uh, from the generators. 
so in terms of uh, getting ready for 2022 when the law goes into effect, please know that the DEC is going to be publishing uh, some important information to its website on June 1st. Uh, most, I think, interesting to me uh, and maybe to others here uh, is the specific list of the generators across the state that are going to be required to donate. Uh, uh, edible food and the list of generators required to donate and recycle. So, it, it, you know, the law kind of makes this this uh, 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 highlights this 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 difference uh, between donation and recycling. Donation obviously is about uh, uh, reusing edible food. Recycling is about composting or anaerobic digestion. So, those are the, the, those two certain efforts uh, that the law tries to uh, to focus on. Um, but I just, in, in particular, wanted to, to let you know that, that, that uh, as of June 1, so just a few weeks from now, we're going to see who those specific generators are across the state uh, that the DEC has uh, pre-identified uh, to being subject uh, to the new um, food donation and recovery law. Uh, and now I've got a whole bunch of slides, well, I hope I've got three or four slides about the, the funding. Uh, that the state is making available uh, to the program. I, I just, in the, in the interest of full disclosure, as they say, please know, folks, I'm, I'm really not um, intimately uh, familiar with, with what all the funding elements or, or funding opportunities are here. But I thought I'm somehow um, compensating for that, in my mind, by providing me with, 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 with um, uh, additional uh, slides on the topic. But at the bottom, uh, you'll see that there's a link uh, to uh, a website uh, op uh, operated by the New York State Pollution Prevention Institute. That's NYSP2I. Uh, and I know that, that the uh, P2I does a, a good job uh, of uh, kind of highlighting the, the funding opportunities uh, and does coordinate some of the grants uh, for the program on behalf of the DEC. So I just kind of want to highlight that that's one way to get a little bit more information uh, about the food uh, recovery effort uh, and uh, the funding that's going to be available, uh, the grant funding that's going to be available to different types of um, organizations and businesses to connect with uh, the, the objectives of the law. Uh, like I said, I have a, a bunch of slides here, a few, just three or four, um, but they're just trying to highlight um, what the what the DEC has done so far. Like this slide in terms of um, uh, distribution of some grant funds, and uh, uh, thankfully that includes um, uh, some funding that recently went to the food bank of Central New York, um, so they, they have a, a refrigerated truck. Uh, for the recovery of more food in our in our local community, so we've already been plugging into that thanks to Peter Ricardo at the food bank uh, to take advantage of some of the funding opportunities to recover uh, edible food in the community. Uh, and then just uh, one more slide here about uh, some of the funding. Uh, some of this stuff might be repetitive from the previous slide, um, but just to highlight that there are opportunities uh, through the DEC through the state. Uh, for some funding for for some of the activities, uh, hopefully that some of you uh, that that uh, your organization uh, is focusing on. Uh, so here's what's uh, kind of um, up next. Uh, draft regulations have been issued uh, to implement the law. So the DEC has issued the draft regs. They're taking comment on the regs, which are under uh, Part 350 uh, in the state's uh, codes and rules and regulations until April 27th. Uh, and the website is there where you can see the regs. Uh, the draft regs. Uh, the DEC always has these kind of convoluted um, web addresses, so uh, sorry about that, but th that's how you can take a look at the draft regs. Also, they've got a, a webinar scheduled uh, on May 12th um, about uh, implementing uh, uh, implementation uh, of the law and what's coming up uh, on June, uh, which I just previously highlighted. Uh, I'd mentioned also June 1, we're going to see that list of food scrap generators, hopefully from the DEC. Uh, another webinar on in, in June 22nd, mostly for businesses and what uh, is going to be required of them to comply with the law. With the law. That's a DEC webinar. I apologize to the, the sign interpreter. I'm, I know I'm really speaking fast, so <laughs> I'm sorry about that. And, uh, you know, my wife does closed captioning. She's got a closed captioning business, so uh, she's, not, she's not crazy about it when people speak as quickly as I am, so apologies. Uh, and then uh, uh, the, 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 the regulations uh, for the law will be uh, issued, uh, the final regs will be issued by the DEC later this year in advance of the law going into effect uh, in January of next year. 
so uh, just some uh, some resources available to you uh, to get more information. Uh, if you have direct questions, you can email foodscrapslaw at DEC. Uh, there's the, the, uh, the email address for that. The DEC does uh, have a, some really great information on their website uh, about the food donation and uh, food scrap recycling uh, law. It's updated regularly. Uh, so there's uh, the link there as well um, uh, to, to uh, check out that web page. Or simply, um, uh, you can Google uh, New York State DEC food scrap recycling law, and you'll, you'll, come, to that, you'll come to that page. Uh, and you can also sign up to receive updates and announcements uh, that the, the DEC will be issuing. So, uh, just one more slide here. Uh, I think some of you folks might be aware that uh, uh, Okra operates uh, a food scrap uh, 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 composting facility on behalf of our community uh, in Camillus uh, on Airport. Andrew, pardon me, Andrew, for interrupting. Maggie has a very important meeting coming up in about 10 minutes, so sh I need to, I also need to log off. I have an appointment, and but thank you everyone for allowing us to be a part of this training. Thank you so thank much. You. So, um, uh, what kind of questions can I answer? I think that kind of, that, that's, uh, that, that brings it home for me. I know I just downloaded a lot of information in about 10 or 11 minutes. Um, so um, I'm hoping that the, uh, that the new law is going to be uh, uh, a benefit to our community and what you folks are trying to do to benefit our community every day uh, and, and working through the, you know, uh, your organization. Uh, I think, um, you know, going forward, it might even be, be you know, food for thought here. Uh, Maura and Jesse uh, may be um, uh, useful to have a representative from DEC, uh, uh, you know, come uh, and speak to you and, uh, as sort of a follow-up uh, to talk about any specific issues uh, uh, that, that maybe I just uh, planted some seeds here, uh, pardon the pun. Uh, uh, you know, if folks have interest in any certain elements of the law, but that's I think that in in uh, in broad uh, terms, that's a, a, an overview of, of what's at what's coming uh, as the state tries to recover uh, more food scraps. Just real quickly, I'll let you uh, know that um, food waste makes up about 20 percent of our community's uh, trash, uh, and it's that's that's over 60,000 tons of material every year. So it's incredible, isn't it? 60,000 tons of food waste going into the trash every year. Not all that food clearly is edible and probably most of it is not. Um, but uh, locally as well, we're interested in reducing uh, that amount of organics going into the trash. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why Okra, uh, you know, some 10 or 11, 12 years ago, um, implemented the construction of the, you know, the Amboy compost site to try to cover, uh, recover more um, uh, food scraps and uh, process it into uh, an SDA certified um, soil amendment. So let me pause there. Any questions? I have a question. Is it okay? Um, what a great presentation. Thank you so much. I had a lot of questions about this when I heard about the new law um, being passed and what that might look like. <clears throat> now, maybe you covered this and I missed it, but as far as the food rescue, where it goes to, are there regulations on the agencies that are being um, canvassed or solicited to take the food scraps, the edible food that wouldn't necessarily go to Oprah, but would be redistributed for a rescue program? Like a food bank? Well, food bank's one of them. I mean, I'll just share my own. Maybe also I'll clarify my question. Um, I'm with a school district and we oftentimes have folks reach out, they want to bring us all their extras and it's wonderful. But sometimes it's very hard. <laughs> so I was just curious is if this comes up and we are receiving a lot of phone calls from the community saying we, we're looking for an outlet to bring our food to. So what is the, what is the um, we on somebody like for me, what, what is the obligation to help you know ensure that they're trying to follow the law well what's my obligation i don't know that you have any legal obligation um I, I, and um and and, and your and yours truly is not an attorney um 
but uh, I, I don't think you're you have any uh, legal obligations under under the law unless the school district, um, you know, the school districts, the K through 12 are exempt, uh, you know, uh, from the requirements of the law. But I think that you should reach out uh, to that, you know, to the to the web page that I gave you, or to that, or send information to that email address to see if the DEC is going to generate some sort of database. Uh, of recipients that they could provide to the waste generators for them to connect with. So that would be my thought on, on that, just to reach out to the DEC and see if, if, if you could, um, you know, sign up for some receiving date, you know, the database of, of those entities that would like to be on the receiving end of the recovered food. Okay. Great. Thanks, Rachel. I think, oh, Jesse, Jesse and Joe had questions as well. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering how much more uh, compost you're expecting to generate at Amboy for Jamesville. Like, do you have an estimate based on the stores, you know, like between SU, Walmart, Wegmans, what you might be getting in excess or is it, you're already getting it from them and it might not be adding anything? Um, well, uh, the site is permitted for about 9,600 tons per year of incoming food scraps. So you know we currently so we have we have capacity to 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 process that. So there's still there's still um there's still room for additional food scrap recovery for that facility. If if it actually you know if we if if we receive more and more significantly significantly more you know if, uh, food waste, uh, we we do have a little bit of uh, ability to expand the site. But as you know, Jesse, very well uh, uh, from your prior role as an Oak Ridge board member, it's a pretty small footprint out at Amboy. Um, so we could build it a little bit more, um, but probably not too much. Uh, but I do think uh, that uh, one of the things we may see on the horizon uh, is, uh, would be additional um, organics processing facilities in the community. And that wouldn't necessarily be uh, composting. It could be, but that could also include some uh, emerging uh, anaerobic digestion facilities uh, to uh, take the, the, the um, uh, the organics and uh, uh, create, uh, you know, some biofuels. Andrew, thanks so much for the presentation. Uh, it's a lot of really fascinating information. I just had a simple question. It's probably one that's got an obvious answer, and I suspect it has to do with um, uh, with just logistics and capacity within organizations. I'm wondering why the smaller organizations are not mandated in the law. Oh, I mean, I I couldn't agree with you more, Joe. I mean, I think this thing needed needs to be tweaked down to about one ton per week of food scraps. Uh, so I think if a, if a if a generator uh, is producing 50 tons per year, uh, they should be subject to the law. That's not going to happen under the current statute. The statute would have to be modified. Um, so I'm hoping some sometime down the road, uh, the the legislators in the DC would would recognize that and and make the adjustments to the statute. Um, I, you know, before the law was passed, I think some of us, many of us um, who are involved with, you know, the material recovery uh, gave DEC that specific guidance that, that you're not being, um, uh, I think, uh, kind of robust enough. Uh, uh, but under the current law, it, it is what it is and it would have to be changed. But I agree with you. And then just a quick follow up question of the large ones that are participating in this. Um, what is the estimated percentage of the total waste that they contribute and then how much are, is being lost by not addressing those smaller entities? Yeah, I don't know. Well, um, I think for those larger entities, uh, you know, the food scraps uh, are, are, a, are a significant quantity by weight. And because a lot of it is very moisture laden, you know, you, you folks know that in terms of you, know, you deal with this material. Um, so it, it's it's not an insignificant amount of material, at, at least based upon weight. Um, I think that uh, makes me think of a note that was on one of the slides I wish I'd highlighted, I didn't mention, that, that many of those large generators across the state, um, uh, including in our community, I'd like to think, uh, that are going to be subject to the law, many of them are already donating the food. Many of, uh, either, you know, uh, to feed the hungry or uh, for recycling through through composting. So it's, it's not exactly starting from scratch. Many of them are already on board. 
But I think in short order, I'd like to I'd like to believe that DEC will see that 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 they, that um, in terms of additional recovery, they're going to have to uh, tighten up the law. But the other part of that equation is there has to be capacity, and I don't think that there really is sufficient capacity across the state right now, anyhow, uh, to, to to handle you know uh, really significantly greater quantities. But I, I think the DEC is aware of that, and they're trying to stimulate the, the development of additional capacity, too. Thank you so much, Andrew. I know we're over time and really appreciate everyone staying a little longer um, and everyone's flexibility around how the meeting agenda changed uh, as in real time. Um, so thank you everyone for um, your flexibility around technical and accessibility issues. Really appreciate uh, this community um, and your your willingness to stand by us as we as we ramble our way through things. Um, so we'll send a lot of stuff in follow up email um, so that you can uh, move forward accordingly and really reach out to me or Steve if you have any questions. I think also the thing I wanna say about this great speaker series is if you have ideas for who you'd like to hear from, um, Steve and the membership and outreach committee are gonna be taking on the planning of, of upcoming speakers. So if you have ideas, email Steve. Um, if you wanna be a speaker, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and thank you again, Andrew, for, for coming and sharing with all of us. And um, is it okay if we share your contact information as well in the follow-up? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Great. Yeah, feel free. And just a quick plug, folks. Uh, we have the, uh, the, the community's annual Earth Day Litter Cleanup uh, coming up uh, uh, next week. Please go to okra.org. Uh, OCRRA.org, and if you're affiliated with a, you know any other organization or just a, your you know your 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 neighbors or um, uh, the organization you work for, please consider signing up uh, for the annual Earth Day Litter Cleanup. It's a great event.